Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have, it's her second time, flew from New York, Anna Roisman, stand-up comedian, writer, and incredible celebrity impressionist. Welcome back to Juicy Scoop. Thanks, girl. I'm so happy to be here. I flew in just for you. Thank you. Just for you. Did you really? No, you didn't. (laughs) Whatever. Who cares? (laughs) Um, We have so much to discuss. Um, First of all, I did post um, about my son because he graduated from high school. He's going to University of Oregon, so I'm wearing the shirt. Congrats. Wow. The whole um, posting ready. is great, though. I just a, a good friend of mine from high school just wrote me and said, her son is going there, too. I'm like, okay, now we really have to like That's have nice. a dinner. So it's like you put it out there. Yeah. Um, but I did this thing because I saw that like Teresa and all these people, they do these elaborate things, which I think there's a company that does it, yeah. but I'm sure there's moms that have, can do it themselves. Where, like, if the kid is going to, whatever, USC, they get everything cardinal and gold, but they also get, like, gold and yellow foods and candies and and balloons and all this stuff. And they the big letters say it, and it's very elaborate. (laughs) And um, so I saw another one of those, and I'm like... And for real, I thought at one point, like, I would kind of get it together, though I've I've literally never ordered balloons, had a balloon <laughs> wall, or even bought my kid a balloon at Ralph's. I've never, and now I'm done. I'm done with school. I'm done with the whole thing. You don't and have to I throw any more birthday parties. <laughs> Clearly. You made like, it 18 years without throwing a real balloon birthday I really, party. I really don't know that I ever, like, I think once I got a balloon. I mean, really bad. I mean, I just really, I've never done the thing where they wake up and it's all decorated at the house. And it kind of makes me sad that I was like so shitty. So I was like, let me do this. So I'm like, Brandon, just do this. And he, we did buy a blanket when we were there and he did have a sweatshirt. And so I threw him on the bed. I didn't even make him put the sweatshirt on. This is what you deal with it when you have boys. This is the best. And then I went through and I found any green and yellow food I had So I had some emerald 100 calorie pack (laughs) almonds. I had almost done with the Trader Joe's pepper jack cheese. That's green. I had this basil. This is a good salad, by the way. This is the Trader Joe's. Yeah, arugula. It's like it comes with like the sliced carrots and like it's a whole salad. But I did never make it. So I just had to throw it out yesterday. And then I had the free range chicken foster farm, which is also green and yellow, which is their color. It's the raw chicken for me. And it's the olive oil mayo, (laughs) which is also green and yellow and part of a zero, zero calorie, zero sugar, not zero calorie, zero sugar, vanilla creamer, which is (laughs) yellow and has a little bit of blue and the duck. (laughs) The and creamer's a far-fetched one. <laughs> I'm like, that's a blue bottle. <laughs> There's a little bit of green. I didn't have much in my fridge. I also don't shop much for my child. This feels like an Easter egg. Like, this is like your Taylor Swift Easter egg where we're like, what is she? What meal will she make out of this post? <laughs> so anyway, I tagged Teresa because she does this for every one of her daughters. <laughs> and she, like, totally responded but was like, I think it's kind of a girl thing. And people are like, no, Teresa, she's joking. <laughs> she's making fun of herself. Because she was like trying to be nice. Like, oh, don't be don't be hard on yourself, oh. Heather. Like, girls are more... I'm like, no, Teresa, I'm not the decorating New Jersey yeah. mom like you. It's not like, like your son was standing there and being like, mom, too many balloons. Yeah, I, don't, I want more. Yeah. So, yeah, very good. Like, you could even see, like, we didn't even ever hang anything on his walls. He's leaving. <laughs> He's been, we've lived in this house since 2005. He was born in 2006 and there's nothing on his walls. So when... I like a clean wall. I'm okay with it. Listen, for my Oregon uh, Eugene decorating juicy scoopers, if you want to help me out, we move in towards the end of September, and I really do want to make his room organized and nice because my other son refused to let me help him and like didn't have a light for the first six months. It seriously looked like a I president honestly- ASU, a prison room at ASU, and I was like, you didn't want the help, but I'm like, now this is my last chance to make it cute and right. Yeah. 
I don't expect this. it to look like an Alabama sorority girl with like headboard stuff, but I would like maybe shelving pillows, a little, cool. a little homey. Yeah, a I light. Got you. Yeah, I think you're on your way to getting like a green giant sponsorship for him or something. Okay. Like, <laughs> I think, I think, <laughs> think bigger. Peas. Think you're bigger. Why you know? have some frozen peas in there? Right. Yeah. Send Amazing. them this photo and be like, we're yeah. looking for something. <laughs> really quick, I just want to put it out there that I will be at Temecula, at the Pachanga, on June 1st with Chris Frangiola. Everything is at heathermcdonald.net. I don't want you to miss out on that one. But the, uh, the tickets are moving and go. Okay, now, did you know what happened with JoJo Siwa at Disneyland this weekend? <laughs> I believe she celebrated her birthday, right? 21. She's 21. Wow. I don't... If the, Oh, Disney World. So this is Orlando. Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm going to be in Orlando June 20th, I think. Uh, yeah, so going there. And we are going to go. I'm going to take Brandon. We're going to the Epcot Center. Because you can't, I've never done. Um, and you're going to recreate never, this. Yes, we've ne- <laughs> we are recreating this. We have never done um, D- Universal or anything except here. Because yeah. we grew up here. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, we'll do one day. And, and you really kind of have to pick. There's four parks at Orlando. I guess you really? pick one a day. I don't know. So she's I went when I was she's like wearing, six. She's wearing her new outfit which is a sparkly construction work. She's basically the, guard she's basically a lesbian village person. Like she's pretty <laughs> she much, she's like I created the village people for lesbians. And like no, like she is a construction so she's a crossing she guard. She really is. She's been wearing that everywhere. I love it. I also love that she was like, who made that? You know, she clearly was like, can you bedazzle? Hey, you know, those construction work. Let's see if we can get one. And then can you bedazzle that for me? Like that poor assistant gluing like every single thing. on. So she has the ears and she's getting wasted. It's her 21st birthday, which I'm all for people getting drunk. But it seemed like she was alone. Now, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> if I feel like the way she was acting, so, so people were some people like a girl from afar knew who she was and was like filming her and like, hi, Jojo. But basically, she was getting people that didn't know her or her song. And she's like, come on, sing it. Karma's a bitch. And then the people are like, and na, 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 na. Like, nobody knew it. <laughs> and she's getting away. She's like, Ugh. No one knew the dance either. That, yeah. dance is, that dance is another level. <laughs> I mean, all this, I can't get over the first question that just made everyone obsessed with her is, uh, first guest for my podcast? <laughs> I don't know. What are my exes? <laughs> like, I just... It's amazing. Drama. So, yeah. And then she goes, um, but I really feel like if she, this is like where I would be if I was an alcoholic at like 70 and being like, come on, don't you know the song Heather McDonald, Juicy Scoop? And people be like, no, we don't, weirdo. Like she, it was, but she's like, where are her friends? She's alone. She's getting wasted. Then she comes back and says she was, She's really wasted, and she's just like, eh, and someone punched me in the eye, <laughs> and her friends are laughing. <laughs> and when she posted it, she did write Stream Karma. She wrote Stream Karma on her TikTok, like reminding people, again, this every this, video, yeah. play me, like the constant promotion is amazing. Um, You know she drives around in her Tesla that's Pink, wrapped. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's all wrapped with her stuff. Yeah. And... I just really, we were talking about it earlier before you came, and I was like, I'm just really fascinated by her. And I was fascinated by her before she came out. I knew she was gay many years before. And I was like, I'm sad that she's not living her truth as like a gay teenager. It'll come eventually. I'm glad it came sooner yeah. than later. I was more disturbed that she was like still wearing pigtails and pony hair yeah, like the, the like bow. yeah like she doesn't identify you know she has to pretend she identifies as straight and that she's six yeah when she was like 17 i'm like even a nine-year-old isn't wearing hairdos like this this is like before you <laughs> yeah. have any say in your hair like horrific and so um i was thinking about it that the fact that like she you know has said i have to support the family that and I and you know and I don't really think the Coogan laws applied as well to her because yeah. the show she was on was reality, which is not residuals, mm-hmm. so they can't control. But then a lot of the money after that was all the products and stuff. Yeah, which the there is no Coogan law in my in my reference maybe I'm, that protects kids who have products. Like it's not like oh your parents can only take ten percent of your products. Yeah. It's more like, oh, they can only take 10% of your SAG after right. money. And so that is 
crazy. That's crazy. I said this yesterday. My boyfriend brought it up and he was like, what's happening with her? I'm like, she was basically like, in you know a bubble they yeah. kept her in this bubble and now she's a fucking adult she can just go and be herself like she's basically like having her like 15 16 year old like sweet 16 part like losing her mind like yeah. I'm a teenager I can do what I want even if she's 21 because she right. didn't get those years like like you're saying she was still in a bow like being like hi I'm Jojo buy my doll like yeah. she was a robot essentially it's fascinating and oh I forgot to put the photo here but Okay, it reminded me of an old movie that I think I don't know that I've ever fully talked about, but I'm obsessed. Did you ever see the movie with Natalie Wood called Gypsy? Gypsy? Yeah. Like the show. The, the, yeah, so there's a musical called Gypsy. Yes. But what my reference is, watching it as a little kid, was what they there was a musical called Gypsy, but then they made a movie out of it. And the okay. movie was amazing. And basically what the movie is, which movie. I I've think, seen the play. Which I've always thought this could be an amazing remake. So again, Hollywood, you're fucking welcome. I've got a movie <laughs> idea for you. The movie you Gypsy. The movie bit Gypsy is about, it takes place like in the 50s. And this mom, single mom, has these two daughters. And she's like, I'm going to make them stars mm -hmm. and she really focuses on the um the one that she thinks is like, like prettier and more talented and she makes them do all these things on the road yeah this the blonde is, oh, oh it came like out a, in the it came out in the 50s but it's supposed to be like taking place in like the 30s right before like movies took off yeah and talkies movies came out so vaudeville and, and theater was huge so right and so she has a blonde one <laughs> and she thinks she's gonna be the star but the blonde one is finally like i hate you mom and runs off and marries a guy yeah and so and all who's a backup dancer like a k-fed situation oh, and then God. they all just go the rest of the people are like okay this vaudeville act is out they leave and the mom is left with who she thinks is the uglier one because yeah. she's brunette. The dud. The brunette dud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other one was blonde. What am I going to do with this brunette blonde one? Blonde blue eyes. That's who, the only one who could be who a star. Is, <laughs> who is the less attractive Natalie Wood. Yeah. Okay. So they're like, we're well, gorgeous. And so she's like, what am I going to do with this thing? She can't sing that well. She can't dance that well. And they come across this place and they are just embarking on burlesque, which mm -hmm. is like early stripping. And at first she's shy and everything. But then she becomes this huge burlesque dancer like a Dita Von Teese her day and but she's kind of like okay mom like I want you to get away you know and the mom finally says I can't you know I am living vicariously through you and the mom's boyfriend is like I can't take it anymore like you <laughs> and that is okay so here's the version of the movie okay of today so it's single mom mm -hmm. and she has a daughter that did all the Nicola whatever. And she had this other one, which happens when you have two kids, whether the first child is a super soccer star, the other one never literally gets a sport going because you're traveling with the super soccer star and the other one's just like, did you forget about me? Okay, so we have something like that with this girl and she thinks this one's not cute, whatever. Okay. So then that one is like the girl that wrote, um, I'm so glad my mom is dead. Right. Um, McCready. Andrea Mc No, what's her? Okay, wow. you know what I mean. I know exactly I'm so glad my mom did. <laughs> that one is like, screw you, mom. She leaves, doesn't want to be any part of the business. Yeah. Sick of paying for it. And the mom's like, what am I going to do with you? And then all of a sudden this one starts to grow up. She gets some lip filler and everything. <laughs> and she's like, there's no money in TV anyway. So what are we going to do? And the mom sets her up with OnlyFans. Uh. And she becomes like the biggest OnlyFan traveling stripper whatever mm -hmm. and the mom is like driving around like a big pink hummer in calabasas like have you signed up for my daughter's only fans and then finally the daughter's like leave me the fuck alone mom yeah and it's gypsy rose 2025 i love it thank you i really love this you have you have my money you ha i i will invest in your project <laughs> do you think this could be a real movie or we just go straight to like lifetime no i think it could be a real movie because okay. why wouldn't it be? I don't know. It's a genius. It, it seems a little too like advanced for lifetime. It's a genius idea. I know remake you, of Gypsy. Who's JoJo in this movie? Is she the? Is she the? Do is she in it? Well, no. She can AP this it though. Just a, she can AP okay. it. But it's <laughs> it's really it's almost like it's like the McCready girl, whatever her name is. I'm yeah. so glad my mom died. It starts out like that. That she's on a traditional show. There is like a Dan Schneider character. Oh my God. Yeah. That everything. And she's just like, I'm so sad. And they don't really make a lot of money, but it's still under the Coogan law. So the mom got her money. Right. And she's Stage like, mom. I just don't want to do this anymore. The mom's mean about her 
wait. The mom, you know, she has to, like the Miley Cyrus, she has to have coffee at eight to like Ugh. do the long <laughs> days and all this. Yeah. So she just goes, I don't even want to do this anymore and leaves. And then that's what happens. Okay. Yeah. With I love the other it. one. I yes. love it. And, also, and the it sisters is the same hate each other. Play. And then in the end, the sisters come together. And they take the mom down. <laughs> <laughs> and they murder the mom. And they burn up. And then the they mom. murder the mom. And then Kim Kardashian gets him out of jail. <laughs> She's like, I understand. I had a momager too. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So we have so much to talk about with that. Oh, okay. God. Bethany Frankel, who actually is in a lifetime movie, uh, looks pretty juicy. She has a, she, uh, what I saw, she looks like she's, very convincing in the role. It's oh, yeah. about a, called Door Murder or something based on a true story where her daughter goes to college and she decorates a room wrong. <laughs> she decorates a room wrong and a, a a a person who's like, why are you using those hideous bed covers? It comes in and murders people. Yeah. Wow. No, there is you some... You dodged a bullet. Have... Yeah. <laughs> some bur- I know investing can feel intimidating and people don't know where to start. That is why I love Acorns. Acorns makes it so easy to start automatically saving and investing for your future. And you don't need to have a lot of money or expertise to invest with Acorns. In fact, you can get started with just your spare change. Yes, you could buy a coffee and they round it up and take those little bit of change, 20, 30 cents, and they invest it. Acorns recommends an expert-built portfolio that fits you and your money goals that automatically invests your money for you. Head to acorns.com slash juicy scoop or download the Acorns app to start saving and investing for your future today. Pay non-client endorsement may not be representative of all clients. Tier 2 compensation provided. Compensation provides an incentive to positively promote Acorns. View important disclosures at acorns.com slash juicy Scoop. Investing involves risk, including the loss of principal. Please consider your objectives, risk tolerance, and Acorns fees before investing. Acorns Advisor LLC Acorns is a SEC registered investment advisor. Brokerage services are provided to clients of Acorns by Acorn Securities LLC member FINRA slash SIPC. For more information, visit acorns.com. Now, you do an amazing Bethany Frankel. So I want Thanks. you to tell us what has been going on in the Bethany Frankel world because I saw a video of how she was in Chicago and she tried to go into a Chanel and you have to have an appointment at this particular one. And she was so angry about it, which I'm going to let you do the impression. <laughs> but the comments were like, hey, unfortunately, this is the state of retail, especially high end in certain cities because they can't have people just busting through the door and stealing it. So they have to have someone be very right there and maybe probably don't have that many people working there. So they can't have 20 people, no matter what you appear to look like, which they shouldn't be profiling anyway. But so they just say to make it fair, have an appointment. Mm -hmm. And she didn't like that. So let's hear what Bethany said when she told the world about her experience at Chanel in Chicago. I was in Chicago and I was like, I want to buy a bag. You know, I've got a bank account to spend my money, which is sick. And I'm going to I'm going to Chanel. I'm going to get a bag at Chanel. Why not? I had half a bag of popcorn. I'm in a white T-shirt. I walk up. They look at me. They're like, they're like, who the hell is this bum? Okay, bum, please. I had an Hermes bag on me. I'm not a bum. And then they were just like, they were like, this. They were like, you need an appointment. I'm like, appointment, appointment for what? I have 20 Chanel bags in my Hamptons house. Okay, 16 in Connecticut. I got three in my new. Have you seen my new Manhattan? Lo- I told him I had three bags in my new Manhattan uh, apartment, and he was just like, whatever. And they wouldn't let me in. They wouldn't let me in. And I said, you know what? This is. This is some pretty woman bullshit. You need an appointment now to what? Get a colonoscopy and to get into Chanel. And so I went and got a colonoscopy. <laughs> and I told them about this. And I thought, I'm coming back tomorrow. And did you see my experiment, Heather? Did you see my experiment? No, tell me. Oh, my God. So this morning, I had hair and makeup come to my house 5 a.m. Wait, is this, the, is this the next video? Follow-up okay. video. Oh, okay? thank you. I got, this is real. This is real. This okay, is go. in real time. Okay, go. I wasn't allowed in Chanel. Okay, they they didn't let me in. So what did I do? I went to McDonald's. I did a couple taste test videos. I got 16 TikToks coming out today. And then I went home and I thought, you know what? I will get Chanel. I will get them. So this morning, hair and makeup shows up at 9 a.m. or 6 a.m. because the store opens at 10 a.m. I had to get ready. I go. I went full head to toe Chanel. Okay, headband, suit, my whole suit, my shoes, my bag, 
everything. I show up and Wait, I- let me ask, Beth- Bethany. Now, you probably didn't plan on packing your Chanel outfit from your Hampton's house to Chicago. So did you send it's a insane. private jet? It's insane. Did you send a private jet yeah. to get your outfit? No, I had my, yeah, of course. I had my assistant. She flew back. She flew over to the Hamptons. She got my outfit there because I had it there for a luncheon, whatever. And then she comes back to Chicago with the full look. I put it on. I hire a really big car to take me to the Chanel. They see me get out of the car. My sunglasses. I had everything on. I walk up. I didn't have an appointment. And they open the doors right away. What do I do? I walk in. I walk right out. Bye, Chanel shows you the profiling. Like you said, they, they're insane there. They're sick about their products. It's disgusting. It's the same account. So what if I had popcorn all over my chest? I was going to still buy a $24,000 bag. Right, because you can. Because I can. And also, Bethany, um, I know that the thought behind doing these two videos was to show the world yeah. that you are a woman of the people. Absolutely. I am- and you are exposing the bullshit in retail it's disgusting. It's ins- it's literally, it's absolutely sick. And you are ready I'm to help the over world it. by flying your assistant back on a private jet to get your Chanel outfit to make this content, correct? Whatever I had to do, absolutely, yeah. I'm going to do what I have to do. This is really like journalism, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is like, I, I'm going to talk about this on my podcast. They're going to pick it up oh, on wait, all the oh, news channels. Really? Yeah. Oh, you have one. I have a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just be divorced. <laughs> yeah. Now, what do you think happened? Let's talk about the controversy of the divorce thing. Because first she did two episodes. Then she took it off iHeart. Yeah. And now it's just back on uh, just YouTube. So I don't know if she got in a fight with iHeart or she was like, why am I giving this to iHeart? It's not part of my contract. I don't have to. I can make more on YouTube. Yeah. And... Um, and the last, I guess the I last saw episode. That. that was like a lot of like. It, it was some weird story about how. I'm still uh, talking like cookie, her. I'm like, I should be mean now. Was, <laughs> c- cookie, they put, c- they, cookie was living in a storage bin. What? And then she would go visit. She'd have an assistant go visit Cookie. I know someone's going to correct me with the story. Listen, I don't really care. I, I saw a clip and I'm like, whatever. It was a good publicity but origi- stunt. I did originally think that. With the passing of her mom, which she had a very strange, rela- strange relationship over and was has been honest about that, which I think can be interesting and healing to a lot of people, I thought maybe she thought, you know what? This isn't the right time to share the story. I have a vulnerable teenage daughter who has a father, and ha- and that's the only extended family my daughter has is through the her father. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm going to put this on the back burner. No, it's going on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of like that. That's what I first thought. Because like, I thought, Could oh, she wow. actually have evolved and been like, this probably isn't great for my daughter that I tell every yeah. ugly story about my husband, even if I legally can do it at this point or not. Let's not do that. And then or she was just like, help. no, I'm not giving the money to iHeart. Part of my deal was Beth, uh, this bee's a bitch podcast <laughs> and reality reckoning, not doing episodes of that anymore. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, 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 Stars watching Old Housewives, which I'm not doing anymore. But I never said I had to give them a new one. It right. just said I'd give them those. And if they don't want those, that's fine. So I'm doing my own thing on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Good I know. It was it was interesting. Good for her, you guys. And you're welcome for all the publicity. <laughs> I, I go, talked about your TV show, your lifetime. Let's talk about Sex in the City. It's all over New York. They are filming. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. It really is. And um, now here is a scene taking place. Because I like to predict, along with all my other predictions, what storylines are happening for next season yeah. with just like that. We know that Chaz Diaz, wait, Che Diaz. Che Diaz. Che, che Diaz. Um, in opening, real, opening the restaurant, Che Diaz now. Now that they're off the show. Che Diaz is off the show and gone, and wow. um, which will be interesting. And then, of course, when we left off, Carrie had gotten back with Aiden, her old boyfriend, and he said, um, yeah, so my kid, <laughs> who is only 15, took the car out before he had a license, so therefore I can't date till he goes off to college. I have to be there every moment for my fucked up kid. And so, guess what, bitch? Right. You did it to me when you fucked big, and now I'm doing it to you, I'm fucking you. And she's yeah. like, but I bought this house. Yeah, literally like us. a townhouse in Gramercy. <laughs> so that your horrible kids... Can live, can visit, <laughs> and and I'm gonna skip across. Oh, oh, where, like every time she goes out of her apartment, you've lived in New York whole life, and she's always like, I don't know which way. Where does my friend Samantha live? 
<laughs> okay, so I was skipping. She must have loved that. She must have loved the, the running way she and looked the skipping. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's wearing Dr. Scholl's in a scene. I saw that. Yeah. With Which, her. With I don't her, blame her. With her uh, pillowcase head, head. Whatever or, that is. Strawberry shortcake. I don't know. <laughs> and in this scene, Aiden is back. And um, so I don't know what he's saying. I don't know if he's saying like, so my kid's going to border school, boarding school, <laughs> and I actually, it's so expensive, I can't afford rent. Ready to have me move into your four-bedroom townhouse <laughs> that you bought with your, your widow money from Big? Oh, my God. What's happening here, do you think? What is happening here? I think he's like, hey, I'm in town for two hours. <laughs> he doesn't look like he has, he's you, got bags to move in. Yeah, you're right. Like, like this is another moment where they're just, she's taking, oh, it's, I'm going to try to read real books again. I don't like reading on my iPad now that I'm old lady and my eyes are. So she's got a book She just in her went hand. to the library, the New York Public Library, right? Yeah. Where she oh. got married. Right. Good point. Where she got married. So she sat there crying for about two hours. And then all of a sudden, Aiden was outside getting a cup of coffee. Because <laughs> look at him. And, and like, she was like, you're back. And he's hey, like, you. I don't want to bother you. I only have a board meeting for like two, two hours. You know, I'm back to the farm after that. <laughs> well, Aiden, you said that... Your little screwed up kid needed all your help. I didn't think I'd see you back in the city. Ah, uh, yeah, he's in rehab, so you know I gotta. I oh, got. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's good for him. Oh my god, do I do a good Aiden? Yeah, it's good for him. You know, he. he... No, I'm turning into Steve. No, go. We're gonna get to Steve in a <laughs> he's, minute. He's. Yeah, he's getting help. It's really. It's it, three months. You know, I'm not gonna see him. It's. It's tough. It's really tough. Well, um. <laughs> good to see you. It's good to see you. Yeah. You can watch me walk away. <laughs> Looks like you're running. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then getting back to your best oh character, <laughs> um, you do play Steve. I do of play Miranda's. Steve. And yeah. now Miranda is now Miranda. single again because Che Diaz, she had a podcast which got her a sitcom which then didn't go. <laughs> and then after that, she had to give up her apartment and moved in with her abuela and work as a vet assistant and never get another stand-up gig again. Because once yeah. you lose a pilot, no, none of your fans... No that one likes go, you. People were, going, people were standing room only at your comedy concert in New York City a year and a half prior. But once a, fo a fountain, uh, focus group says we're not interested... Nobody can go to your show and you're doing 10 minutes again. Yeah, you're a loser. Yeah. I don't know if you know that about the comedy world. I think Che Diaz jinxed themselves when they when they announced in front of that whole room and they were like, I'm going to Hollywood, bitches. I booked a pilot. And everyone was like, whoa. And, and I don't think anyone understood <laughs> that that doesn't mean you have a TV show yet. <laughs> I'm jinxed. Bu I'm bummed because... I thought that what was going to happen is the show was going to go. And because she cast mm. an Italian, Tony Danza, yes. as her dad, that she would then get canceled. Get canceled. The girl, <laughs> the, the, sorry, the person who wants to cancel everybody, the character of Che Diaz, gets, gets canceled themselves yeah. because that man should have been Mexican or Irish or whatever. Also, he, poor Donnie Danza had like a really had like a bubbling storyline. Yeah, there. <laughs> it's ripped out. So we never we never got to see that. And so, what is going on with Miranda now? Now she again, she's a Harvard educated um, attorney and partner, but she is living on a couch and has no money and is an intern at fifty five, <laughs> and has no confidence. What did and they do is to a Miranda? Bumbling, is a bumbling idiot. All you have to do is watch an old episode. We talked about it with Guy Brandon like crazy. So what is going to happen when? Um, when Steve sees Miranda um, at a farmer's market, she's bring she has to provide some food because she has no money for rent. Yeah. So she's going back to her friend, who's the professor, to bring some food. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, I saw Miranda. Oh, the, the Juicy Scoop logo. Oh, my God. I thought it was Miranda, you know. Record Steve, button. it's me. Oh, it is Miranda. I'm like, Miranda. Oh, my God. Miranda, you look amazing. Right? Your hair's back to normal, huh? Well, you know, I don't know. The gray wasn't doing it for me now that I'm single again. I went back red. You look great. You really do, Miranda. Oh, man. So you're here buying some uh, some sort of cherries? <laughs> what the hell? What, what you got in that basket, huh? Well, since we we got divorced and all our money goes to Brady, who is living life as a professional clown. He's doing Based great. on his hair. <laughs> I... Um, 
Just, I have no way to pay for the rent. I'm couch surfing for the last year and a half. You're couch surfing? Yeah, with my professor. Miranda. Oh, you're back in school too? What happened? Did you lose your law degree? Oh, that's so awful. Listen, I got it. Let me tell you something. I could help you out, Miranda. I got a new place. You know, I got a new joint over in uh, Coney Island. You ever been? You come to Coney Island much? I don't know, Steve. I mean, we tried this for 20 years. It didn't work. I felt sorry for you because you had one ball and then I got pregnant and then we got married and I I thought it was fine, but you never knew how to go down on me and I I don't think I want to go down to Coney Island now either. Miranda, no, I've been watching tons of videos, you know, on the YouTube. Uh, uh, Let me tell you, I know how to to please please a lady now, okay? Uh, You know, I'm not going to brag too hard. You know, I'm not a, I'm a humble guy, but... uh, yeah, I got a I got a three on three game later. If you want to come to my place, I could try finger. Come on, come on, really come love on. It. I love the way you do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> now you said you had a little contact with the actual David. Oh my man, Eigenberg. David! Tell me what happened. <laughs> We've had a lot of back and forth over the last two years. And That's by amazing. Lot, I mean like three or four times. But That's pretty good. My so dream he, is... So he likes it. He likes it. He does like it. He he doesn't go online too much. You could tell yeah. if you look at his Instagram. Yeah, he's, yeah it's very once, rare that he posts. Once yeah. a year, maybe his kid is like, Dad, post you know something it's your birthday whatever yeah yeah so we he said my friends always send me this you know uh, it's, it's great i do it in my show or he, he wrote me he's like i'm never on the instagrams he says it with an s <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what he writes but then he was like but uh you know i heard the i saw your video i think you're hysterical like you're great and then he wrote hey anna like like my <laughs> mer- <laughs> with a question marks like miranda Oh my god, I love it it's so much. It's so funny. It's such a niche thing, but like on TikTok, people are like, I knew what this was from the second I, I clicked it. And I was like, oh wow, like there's a Steve Hive out there. And everyone was pulling for Steve. Yeah. And they gave Steve no screen time on this show. So I've t- we've talked recently, this week we talked, and I said, when are you in New York? Uh, they're shooting. It's My whole TikTok is like bootleg of like, you know, and just like that scenes like you were showing before. And he's like, I got some tea, okay? This is, this is a paywall, right? Because he was yeah. like... He was like, well, they're only giving me like a day or two in September. I was like, a day or two? You should be all over this season. Yeah, because what's going to happen to your character? They are like, I'm planning on doing a one a one woman slash man <laughs> show on this. They like, need uh, you. But he's like, but maybe we can make something goofy when I'm in town. Absolutely. <laughs> like Steve meets Steve. It's got to happen, you know? Or oh maybe we just go God. play some basketball for like 20 minutes. Or, or when I do my show in New York. Oh, my God. Maybe you both can come oh out for my a surprise God. and do a little one-on-one hoops on the stage die. at the Palladium. <laughs> I can't wait to meet him. I would die. I felt like I didn't think he liked it because he's on the Chicago Fire show. Is that what it's called? Chicago yeah. Fire? He's on a show and he plays uh, He plays another bartender. <laughs> oh, he's not a firefighter? I think he's a bartender okay, there. Yeah. And there's a character named Miranda on the show. No way. I swear to God. <laughs> and... I got tagged a billion times. You know when this happens to you. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. you, your Britney thing. Like, so last year, this is not Britney level, but last year I got tagged all, all on TikTok because the NBC show, NBC posted him doing Miranda, Miranda, Miranda. And she comes, the girl who plays Miranda comes in and he goes, ah, wrong one. And something like that. And everyone was like, you stole this from Anna. And I was like, well, he is the Steve that I that says Miranda. That I did it, you know, based off of. But anyway, but it was funny that you caught on that <laughs> just like her, like, you know, and now I know a lot of people do the skipping across. You yes. know, but I've been saying that for a long time. And I, I remember from the movie, my favorite line was $20 <laughs> for shoes when they're in Dubai or in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> You have the head movement. Yeah, so, well, but you really did come up with that. He was always confused. Like, how many redhead women that are taller than you that you have a child with are walking down the street in New York? Like, it's so funny. Even when she's in the apartment, he's like, Miranda. <laughs> like, he, like, when my boyfriend says my name, he's mad at me. You know, it's only anger. He's just saying it like every, it was like, it was like, no, I'll stick to the script. They're like, you don't have to say the name every time. We just, you know, he's like, I'll stick to the script. I got it. <laughs> he also did it for his ma, you know? When he's yeah. like, ma? Yeah, yeah. My ma. <laughs> That's my ma. Oh, my God. <sighs> anyway, well, we, we, Let's like manifest. I said, I will never, ever stop watching this show. I don't care what direction it goes in. If they pick up my uh, suggestions, great. If they don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 
Don't I you also feel it, like it's hate like it. I can't stop. It's like the lottery now. I feel like for actors, like like now we're seeing who, like Rosie O'Donnell's on it. I oh, think Sherry yeah. O'Terry. I was like oh. the cameos coming on this season. I'm love like, you it. guys hit the jackpot. Yes. Even if they have one line, I'm like, ugh. I love it. Do you know I I was in season one? Wait, I wasn't in season one. But do you know that I did an experiment for season one? Wait, do tell. I don't know the okay. story. I begged my agents. I was like, I need to get on this show. I don't care if I'm coaching. So this is like. Wait, season one of and just like this. Yes, okay, and just, just like that. Like that. Just I had like just, this. I had started just like doing. This is the third remake of just like that. Go on, yeah. <laughs> Which they'll make probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, I begged my agents. I was like, you don't understand. Like, I need to get on this show. I, I am Steve. I was like, and even if I'm not him, like, just get me a one line as like you know yeah. the coat check girl or like yeah, yeah. passerby. I don't give a shit. And I never got a single audition. So it was the la- I knew when they were done shooting. It was the last week of shooting. I applied to do background work. Okay, which I have not done since I'm like 21 years old right. and I was like I want to get on set like let me do a background work I applied I got picked and I was like oh my god I'm gonna do background work and I said I'm gonna make a TikTok yeah of I'm gonna film this entire day I'm not gonna say the name of the show so I don't get kicked out of SAG <laughs> and, yeah because I, I was like whatever I was like I'm gonna film until they take my phone away and I told the like people I was with we did two scenes I told them and they were like that's cool yeah no worries I'm literally standing on set they're like action I'm like holding my phone up <laughs> like th- like walking by I ruined season one for me I knew what happened with Miranda and Che because yeah. I was in the fight scene mm. and I was like oh god and but I literally I'm going to send you this TikTok. So it got like millions of hits on tic- on TikTok. And then I didn't post on Instagram. I was scared. I was like, is SAG going to come for me? Because people were like, I work in production on this show. And we're oh, all talking out. about we're talking about this TikTok. And like, you're going to get in trouble with the union. And I'm like, bitch, you could have taken my phone away on set. Like, I literally stood there <laughs> filming. <laughs> Everyone's filming the background of this. Like, it was yeah. just, it was so funny. Meanwhile, this person who, like, was like, I work on the show. I went to their TikTok and they were like, you guys, I stole a sweater from the set of <laughs> just like that. And I was like, production's coming for you, honey. Like, watch out. Amazing. I gave them promo. I thought I, it was. Of course. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a new character that is blown up on my Instagram. Oh, my God. Which is based on a real Insta- based on a real content creator. <laughs> this girl I found. But it's amazing. It's like at 1.3 million right now on Instagram. And not, of course not as good on TikTok because I don't know why. It's TikTok either one or like, the other. Yeah. It very rarely strikes both. Yeah. And. <laughs> My own daughter had it sent to her. It's like a funny, thing. but I, I obsessed with this girl. I love that though. When a family member gets it, my mom's yeah. like, "Someone in the nail salon watched your Steve video." I'm like, "Wow, much?" And so, but what's great about this comment that I do, which is basically this girl who's flirting with other women to either follow her or we don't know. I, I kind of make her a scammer. But I came across this girl a while ago, and she. D- didn't have an enormous amount of followers, but I was like, you know, who is this girl? Yeah. And um, so s- like 30 percent of the comments know who I'm parroting. Other people just think it's a funny character, which yeah. I'm like, that's that's when you know you've done it right. Yeah. Like you don't know how you don't have to know what I'm imitating or what I'm referencing. If it's if it's entertaining on its own, yeah. then, you know, you've done your work as a comedian. So I'm going to do more. I love that with her. I mean, people think I'm Hilaria Baldwin on TikTok and they're like, go back to your country. I'm like, what country? This is my country. Oh, I have some sad news. There was a time when we thought that maybe Hilaria would get picked up for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I know. I know. And they have announced the cast. Who She didn't make the cut. Um, let me see if I have, if I, if I did the video. Well, the they cast. also, she also like, here it is. Here's the cast so far, according to Bravo Snark side. Okay. It, it is the, the returnings are Garcelle, Erica, Dorit, Kyle, and Sutton. Mm-hmm. And Kathy Hilton will be a friend along with Meg Tilly. Mm-hmm. Jennifer the, Tilly. Je- sorry, Jennifer <clears throat> Tilly. Who I love. And then there is this new girl named Bozama St. John. I don't mm. know if I'm pronouncing her first name. But apparently she is like a Netflix executive or mm. CEO or something. Like she's some she's she in entertainment, in but she's not an actress. So I kind of love that aspect of what she might bring to yeah. it or whatever. She's like an accomplished businesswoman. So but uh, but apparently it was supposed to be the other rumor that it was supposed to be this 
actress and I her name escapes me, but she was like on like CSI Miami. I guess that's not happening. Okay. Yeah, no, According when Hilaria, when all that like when that like rumor came out, did you see her story when she posted a photo of her and her kid? in at like the Beverly Hills Hotel and was like, we love Beverly Hills. And everyone was like, what is she doing here? She's either, she's just feeding the rumor. She loves yeah. it, you know? She was like, why not? <laughs> and people are like, join New York. You live in New York. She was like, what, I don't know if I talked about it with you, but she was that one of those old stories that I bring up that you're like, Heather, but it's Juicy Scoop history. When Sean Young showed up at um, the studio as Catwoman in the outfit <laughs> and was like walking around hoping to get the part. <laughs> And they're like security. Yeah. So it's like could be like that. Like she just came to Beverly Hills and was like dropping the seeds. Knock knock bravo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what would she say in her confessional if she was to of why well, she's auditioning? She hasn't made it yet. We have the confessional. Um, so we're just gonna ask you some stuff about your life and see if you're a good fit with the girls. Yeah. Um, Hilario. But tell us, like, what is do you watch the what do you think about Beverly Hills, about moving you and your seven kids here? I, I love it because it's like so many, you know, celebrities like walk around here, you know? It's just like I, f I feel like home, you know, because I am a celebrity a celebritar and it's like it's kind of like you know like the Hamptones which I have a house and I go there so like <laughs> Beverly Hills is like it's kind of like the Hamptones you know it's like we can go to er Erwan have you, yes, have it, you ever of won? course, that's our grocery store. Love, for, it's very expensive, it's, but yeah, it's nice. You know, I took my my siete balbunitos, cuatro nannies, and <laughs> Alec. We go for lunch. It's like you know, eighteen thousand dollars. It's like nice. You yeah. know, it's really good food. Yeah, perfect. I'm gonna hire you. I I'm still so. I'm still sad about it. <laughs> um, okay, so let's. Okay, those let women would rip her apart in two seconds. <laughs> They'd be like, "Where are you from?" What did you do? So the Kardashians are out the new season and there's lots of articles about what we can expect from the season. And one of them is Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Since we're talking about the original <laughs> Gypsy and Gypsy Rose, and clearly she was she had a momager too that put her out there. They got free homes and free Disney and make a wish and all these things. She was inspired by that movie to yes. name her that. And then she sure. went and she gets to meet Kim Kardashian who you know, is a big part of the Innocence Project. But then also, she also has a big momager. Yeah. <laughs> who might have, who basically also, you would, based on my movie idea, could sort of, some people based on the sex tape and stuff, wondering if Kris Jenner had any say in it. So um, we don't know what happens in this scene, but uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard um, is meets out and gets to meet Kim. <laughs> and meets her hero. So you do an, an amazing... Chris Jenner. Oh, thanks, doll. Do you want to get ready for it? Sure. She, she, we are getting a little wig on just to get her in the mood. But, um, you know, there's a lot going on in this season. And I just want to get Chris's opinion on all these like leaks of what it's going to entail for the season. How's that? It is great. She's got a cute black wig on. Hold on, doll. Now we're. <laughs> Now we're set. Okay. Is it, how am I? Am I crooked? No. If it's crooked, just good. tell them Corey and I had a real fun time on the way over. <laughs> He's in the car. <clears throat> oh, a lot of people wonder if Corey Gamble is a, an industry plant or a CS, CIA plant. <laughs> does it, what does he know about Diddy? <laughs> I just, Corey is uh, the face of Dolce & Gabbana. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's his only role. And that is his only and, job. Yeah. Um, Chris, we see that the show is out and they say that uh, the Kardashians call out Caitlyn Jenner on her involvement in House of Kardashian doc. It hurts. Apparently, they're not happy about this doc. Yeah. Why, Chris? Why are you not happy? Well, you know, for so many years, we were partners on, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians. And then there goes Caitlyn spilling all of our shit all over. the What? What is it even on? I don't even know what it's on, you know, like Fox News or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just not right. You know, we're still family. We co-parent and we're really. You co-parent even though everyone's grown? We co-parent. Yeah, of course. I mean, our kids still come home for dinners and you know someone else cooks and we really it, it just felt like a betrayal it really did and I have supported Caitlin on her journey and here she is you know telling all of our secrets I mean <laughs> I mean I saw this 
this headline, and I'm a little concerned because I, too, was part of this dog. Oh, my God. Heather. Yes. <laughs> I got to get out of here. <laughs> Heather, but you are part of our family. Well, <laughs> Chris, I heard some rumblings that you weren't pleased with me either. Well, no. I mean, the Christmas party was strike one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Chris, but I thought you, we made up since then, you know? Well, we did. And if you watch the, uh, there were three episodes that I was really only featured in one, and it was really about your life before meeting, uh, bef- like your divorce and all that, yeah, and kind of before your fame of the Kardashians, and I, I would like you to rewatch it because I'm very complimentary towards you and the girls. Well, that's really nice. Okay, I really appreciate that, doll. Because you know, <laughs> if you said anything else, I would have my people come for you, <laughs> Corey. Corey, <laughs> Corey would come. He'd he'd take the juicy out of Juicy Scoop. <laughs> um, also, there's a, a clip that says Khloe Kardashian, Kris Jenner. Marvel over Scott Stick- Disick's weight loss on the Kardashian oh, yeah. premiere. What do you think? Tell me. Were he you looks, concerned or you thought he looked good? I think he looks fabulous. I really do. He, You know, he managed it. Maybe he went a little too far. With the Ozempic? A little Ozempic, yeah. <laughs> you know, we do Ozempic Sundays at my house, so we do it for, like, dessert. If, oh, okay. Yeah, you... Sh- you Sprinkle it on a or little. Or use a squirt in the injectable. <laughs> yeah. You swear, we just squirt it on like a chocolate syrup, you know? Oh, we, okay. we let everyone just suck it down. And then you just take like two bites and you're full. Exactly. That's I love it. That. Yeah. You I guys think... all do look amazing. Oh, Heather, <laughs> she's making up for the documentary. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think Scott looks amazing at any weight. I really do. I mean, <laughs> look at him. He's a star. <laughs> the Lord, let the Lord be with us always. <laughs> amazing. I love Scott. And then we also, Chris, I want to get your last opinion on this mm. amazing scene of when um, Kim Kardashian was supposedly kind of dissed by Anna Wintour. Yeah. What was that? She sat down and it was... People didn't know if she was late or what the case was or that she wore too sexy of an outfit. What was it, Chris? Because you were right there to witness it. Absolutely. Well, I was there. I had a whole talk with Anna Wintour. You know, we talked about covers and which family members she wants for next year's And covers. then all the different Vogues, right? All the Vogues. Because Spain and all the other Italia. ones. Italia. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and then Which Kim- one is Corey going to be on? Corey's going to be on Ital- Vogue Italia. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a yellow Dolce & Gabbana Pajamas, silk right? suit. Yeah. <laughs> you could wear it as pajamas if you're fancy. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Kimberly was late. And you know what? I have to say, having raised her since birth, Kimberly can be late sometimes. And it's, it's you know, in this case, it wasn't a good look for Anna Wintour. But, she, you know, she's so beautiful that Anna can forgive Kimberly because Kimberly has really done a lot of work with Vogue. So it was a it was a little bit of a weird moment, but <laughs> she pulled her shit together. <laughs> well, thank you, Chris, for oh, stopping thank by. You. I really appreciate it. I I. I really like you, like you to rewatch that um, episode and see that I did not say anything that that you wouldn't be okay with. Well, I'd rather kill myself than watch Caitlyn's documentary again. <laughs> but I'll take your word for it. I really will. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you'll come to Christmas this year. I'm, I'm hoping, and you know, I, I I can go alone. Yeah, you're childless now, right? They're I'm gone. Sh- <laughs> they're, they're gone, and Peter can stay at home. Oh, we love Peter. He's been over a couple times though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whichever. But again, we can, you, we, Peter's we can coming travel to... lean. We can travel lean is what I'm saying. Great. Okay. I don't have an entourage anymore. Peter's always invited. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing, amazing Chris Jenner. It really is my favorite because you get her point of view. Now, I have to tell you, I saw this article <laughs> and I was so excited because I thought it was such a juicy story. Page six writes, colorful socialite Jose Castello Bronco, 61, accused of assaulting 95-year-old wife, the diamond heiress Betty Gafstein in Portugal. And it's a photo of the two of them, the 95-year-old woman and the 61-year-old who I thought was a woman. So I was so excited because I thought this was a May-December older lesbian that had been together a long time, but also a gold-digging lesbian (laughs) <laughs> that wanted to kill her wife. And I was like, this is the juiciest story ever. And then when I went and clicked and read the whole thing, I'm like, that's a man <laughs> living as a man, 
but no, but you know, a lot of filler. has nails, has nails, and has hair and makeup. But absolutely, they've been together a while. If you squint, it really is like. Is but this a lot. Liza some people Minnelli thought it was Daniel Staub. <laughs> the the Instagram was like, was that Daniel Staub? But it was great because then I was like, oh my god, I can't believe. And all the com- most of the comments were exactly what like I thought this was a lesbian couple. Yeah. That the younger one was trying to like kill the older one for the money, but anyway, the staff won't let um, the sixty-one-year-old husband <laughs> around oh, no. the ninety-five-year-old wife because they were afraid that the plug is going to be pulled. Though. Yeah, all of this is crazy. Also, this photo just looks like someone being like, "Excuse me, can I take a photo yeah. with you?" <laughs> right, like the angle, like popping in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so funny. Um, now this was interesting. So Kelly Osborne who has changed her hair to look like Kim Zolciak Berman. Yeah. Wow. I that really... I mean, that's got to be a wig. It's yeah. so much hair, it's got to be a wig. Yeah. She normally has purple. She's finally left the purple. <laughs> and she quite... And they're all fan of the Ozempic. Okay. So she's very thin, and she's a new mom. Although she said she didn't take it, right? Wasn't that the whole drama? It's just like smaller meals. <laughs> it's walking, okay? Walking. Get... Some walking shoes and watch the weight fall off in four months. I don't know why people... When you've never... When you've had trouble for 40 years and then you just start walking around the block. Yeah. Because you see so many people walk in LA too, right? Yeah. Just drinking more water (laughs) and then not mentioning it at all until... Until you've lost the hundred, not yeah. not doing any workout videos, nothing. Right. Meanwhile, her mom was all like, "I took too much Ozempic." Yeah. Now she's a little bummed. The, <laughs> you know, Ozzy said I'm too thin, but I like it. Anyway, they of course have a family podcast, and somehow the brother or somebody brought up Juliana Ranzik, who, as we can remember, Juicy Scoop history. They did Fashion Police together, mm-hmm. and after Joan Rivers passed, they were still doing it for a while, and they were trying to find their footing of, um, you know, who's going to replace Joan, and they didn't really replace Joan. Melissa did it. Um, oh, no, Kathy did it for a while. Kathy Griffin did mm. do it for a while, and then she chose to leave. We really don't know why she left. Okay. And yeah, that was a brief stint, I remember. But we were just getting into like being a more politically correct, sweeter society, which the only reason Joan got away with that is because that was always Joan's sense of humor. And she was Joan and she was older and she didn't give a shit. So once she had passed, they tried to do this show, which just isn't funny if every person that looks hideous, you're like, not in love with the color. I would go right. with a deeper shade of yellow, but otherwise gorgeous. She rocked yeah. it. Like that was every comment. And so the show he's is like, like that now. Like, he oh, it's so- like there's no scoop at all. There's nothing yeah. to it. But Juliana, you know, they, they always had writers. And what happened was Zendaya, I remember when I first heard this story. And they go, what do you think of this? I'm like, what? They're like, Juliana Ranzik says that Zendaya must, I'm saying her name right. Mm-hmm. Zendaya, I Zend- Zendaya. 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 Okay, that Zendaya, um, she had these, she was wearing these like braids. And she said, it looks like she smells like, um, Patchouli and weed. Oh, God. I do remember this. And I remember at the time, Wrong. Zendaya was only 17, 18. Oof. And I remember reading that and thinking, oh, is it because she doesn't want to be associated with being a pot smoker? <laughs> I didn't know that it was a a racial slur to yeah. say that someone with braids would be enjoying marijuana. Yeah, I don't wrong. know. But it was obviously wrong. And, you know... She was like, I have to apologize. But at the same time, I was like, wait a minute. The writer, the writer wrote it. The producers agreed that she should say it. They then edited it. Mm-hmm. Then E approved it and just left her out there to hang, hang out to dry. Yeah. But she did apologize and everything. But Kelly Osborne was like, I will not. Like, she really was like, I don't want to ever work with her again. Like, she did a whole big thing. Really? And put it out how she disgusted she was. Mm. And so then... Juliana left and she and her husband are raising their child and they have all these restaurants and she makes millions and millions of dollars selling QVC leggings and 12 different sizes and colors and whatever. They're fine. Yeah. I don't think she really misses that world of like being in an uncomfortable dress for 12 hours, you know, during the Oscars, but she was the queen of it. And, um, but of course she, so, so it comes up and then, and then um, Kelly Osbourne is like, we don't need to talk about her. She doesn't exist or she's not relevant or something. 
And then, you know, all I can think about is when Kelly Osbourne said the thing on The View. Do you remember that? What is the she View. Saying? So The View was being, she was a regular on The View yeah. after Fashion Police. Kelly there, was a regular on The View? Yes. Oh, my God. I don't remember. She was like the young one. And yeah. they <laughs> said, um, they're talking about Trump. And he hadn't won the election yet. But, you know, she was not a fan. And it, something came about immigration. And Kelly Osbourne said, I have one question for you, Donald Trump. If we get rid of all the Latinas, who is going to clean your toilets, Donald Trump? Oh, my God. And, I do remember And they this. go, uh, because it's live. And <laughs> oh they're God. like, oh, just, I mean, no, I don't mean that. I mean, in the sense that, in the sense that. Oh, you can't dig yourself out And of they're that. like, um, Latinas and Latinos in this country do other things than janitorial oh work. God. Like, it was just. And she's, and so it was. I think the worst moment and I and you know and then she was like then she tried to say even though I have a housekeeper I actually do clean my own toilets and I'm like no you don't <laughs> if you have someone come to clean you to have more clean even if you have someone come, come once a month you're <laughs> yeah. gonna be like you're doing the hardcore I have a housekeeper. you're not gonna be like hey can you fold my towels I'm gonna do my own toilet like <laughs> you're not doing that and so it just kept just split going the on so if I you know, listen, if I was her, I would never be trying to remind people of anything like this because there's people like me that remember. Yeah. And will bring it up because I just. Yeah. Drama. I don't think that was one to ever get past. But that's live TV for you. Something must have also happened between them. If Some, Well, that's like, what I think. Beyond I think that. Because there I was feel something like... that like I think in that she maybe didn't really like her. And then when this was coming out, she was like, "Ooh, no, this is really the way. She thinks about other things, and I'm glad it's getting exposed that she's not a nice person. Or, yeah, it was probably just they probably never totally were asshole buddies, as my dad would say. And then there's competitiveness, and then uh, yeah. there's like who gets Juliana chosen. Was the like right. queen, and she kind of was a correspondent on right. those red carpets. Sometimes. And then Juliana's and... probably like, I came from you know nobody famous, and now I'm sitting next to you, and you. <laughs> You know, we're this kid on a reality show. That, yeah. You know, what do you know about fashion except that you were just... I mean, Kelly Osbourne got handed so many jobs. Yeah. Like, she's on The View and talking about politics and everything. She didn't even graduate from eighth grade, I don't think. And if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But I remember, like, she, it wasn't... They weren't well, they yeah, either homeschooled or no schooling at all. Doesn't matter. I know that doesn't make someone smart. But clearly, look at what she said. <laughs> And I always think that must have happened. Like, she must have had some hairdresser or something. And she must have been like, oh, I've got the joke. I've got the joke. <laughs> and then the hairdresser's like, oh, yes. And nobody, like, thought it through. I, there's no way she ran that. I mean, there's no way that was ever run no. by a producer. No. And she was young <sighs> and dumb. And she did make a huge mistake. Yeah. Yikes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, okay, this is Southern Charm alum Catherine Dennis was arrested for DUI. I don't cover Southern Charm that much, mm -hmm. but are you familiar at all with this show? I'm, a, I'm familiar with it, and I literally, like, you brought this up, and I just saw it on Instagram. As soon as I went on Instagram, it was so, like the photos are, like, all over the so place. So Southern Charm probably started, like, 10, 12 years ago, and she was an original cast member, mm -hmm. stunningly beautiful redhead who just got prettier as she got older and figured out how to fill in her brows and a few things. Mm -hmm. But, like, tall, beautiful, and she got pregnant very young by one of the oldest cast members mm. who was like almost 50 when she was 21 <laughs> and they weren't even a committed relationship and then she gets pregnant again by him and then she struggles with drugs and alcohol through all these seasons Ugh. and then he they have this horrible custody paddle he gets accused of awful things too Ravenel was his last name anyway they finally have some type of settlement with these two kids mm -hmm. custody settlement and she gets in an accident. She got in an accident recently, but I don't know if, but it wasn't necessarily a DUI. It was like they didn't, it was like they thought she did a hit and run near school. They didn't know. This one, TMZ has shown the, her getting the, doing the DUI test. Mm -hmm. And she has been arrested for that. She, they put her in the back seat where she gets arrested, you know, has a hit. Yeah. And there's nothing like a back seat reality star arrest. <laughs> Cuffed. Cuffed and just being, yeah, cuffed and being like, she, and then he's, the cop is coming to do, put the seatbelt on her and she's like, you're disgusting. Get away from me. So what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like, 
I need to put a seatbelt on you. Yeah. Like, it is my job. I'm not trying to, like, cop a feel, lady. Oh, so you're going to get in more trouble if you yes. just... <laughs> and then she's like, wait, what about my puppy? My puppy! And they're like, the puppy will be going to a shelter where it'll be safe. Oh, no. No, I just want my dog. I want my dog. He's, my... He's the only thing I care about. He's the only... I'm like, meanwhile, you have two children. <laughs> I mean, I just want I understand. the dog. <laughs> I'm, I know people care about their dogs and they also have children, but it's like just, it's just, it's just the worst look. Yeah. And it's very bad. And like the ex. And they're like black been, and white photos. Yeah. And too. the ex has been sued for sexual assault and all these other things, but somehow he's had more custody than she. And now it's, now and that's, it's and now he wants, he wants full. He doesn't want a co-parent. He wants to be like. No, the kids are with me and like you can come visit, but I don't want to deal with your bullshit. And this is going to be really, really bad, obviously, for her now. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. For custody, this is all over the internet. I like, as someone who doesn't watch the show, you're like, it's been on for 12 years. I'm like, even I've seen these photos everywhere. Yeah. And then she left the show a year ago. Mm. And I don't know if it was a mutual goodbye or what, but because she'd struggled with this stuff or was just extremely entitled, I don't know which is true, maybe a little both. Like they, so much of the storyline was like, yeah, Catherine didn't call us back. Ooh. Catherine didn't come to the party. Catherine, and again, I've said this with reality stars, it is a job. Yeah. So it's just like if everybody sh- has to work at McDonald's and the shift starts at twelve, and you're all making minimum wage, and this one is never showing up, mm-hmm. you get annoyed. Yeah. But you can't say that and break the fourth wall and be like, what do you mean she's not coming to the baby shower? What do you mean she's not going on the yeah, it's your the three day trip? Where we're all going to talk shit about each other and get drunk and shoot duck or whatever. Like, like I imagine it's like any any production, right? Where they're like, do you have any days that you can't shoot or this or that? Right, like, yeah. here's the schedule. Right. You like, yeah, you got to do it unless there's <laughs> literally like you're someone died and you have to go to a funeral. Not calling or saying if, you know, like right. that's what really pisses people off. <sighs> um, this has been really weird. <laughs> so Trista Sutter, who married Ryan, she was the first bachelorette so she came and they're from still the first together bachelor like yeah she's 25. 51 he's 49 their kids must be off to college by now yeah. they've been married forever um but he started to post these like things like <laughs> where's trista or like i worried about or very concerned did you see some of these i saw yeah there was a really long post where he oh, like, like a long went, diatribe a yeah. long one where he went on and on and it's a black and white photo okay. and it's like and people are like, did she die? I have, there are theories though of what this is. This is a publicity stunt. Yes, it's a publicity. People think she's doing like special forces yeah. or maybe she's doing mass singer. Right. But then why would you draw attention to that? Like if, you'd, if, if you're if you doing one of those secret things, because I've talked yeah. to people who've done mask singer and it's really important that you don't reveal to anybody that that's Even what your you're family, doing. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, which was why we, like people thought jokingly like, you know, before we knew what was happening to Princess Kate, they're like, "Is that is she doing mass singer?" <laughs> Could you and, believe that? Was but a- this one is really, really <gasps> weird. And I, I mean, I hope she's okay, and she's just doing a dumb reality short show, or, uh, show so, or Traders too. or something. Yeah, she has to be, or maybe you know, they're so out of the reality show scene. Maybe he's like, "This will be so fun. We could like." We're like back in the limelight. But like after that girl, Micah Miller, like died mysteriously. Do you know about that with her weird pastor ex-husband? Oh, God. I'm like, I don't think you ever want to throw out yeah, like, as the husband, like a gone girl theory. <laughs> like, I just don't think in the world of Dateline and true crime, right. that's why. Any like do. fake death posts, too, are just kind of cringe. Uh, yeah, any kind of like, you know... um, there sometimes you just come across something and you do think someone died and yeah. I'm like wait before I say my condolences let me read more yeah and you're like oh good no they didn't die they just decided to do a black and white photo exactly <laughs> it's always the black and white. we're like uh oh something's bad like a photo of a dog in black and white you're like oh no and they're like my dog got groomed I'm like what, what? the <laughs> fuck <laughs> not okay oh my god hilarious. Um, what do you think is going on with J Lo <laughs> and Ben? They should be posting some black and white photos. I don't know. This photo for people is so hilarious. It's that Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck smile as they're snapped together amid <laughs> reports of Meryl Streep. And I mean, Ben Affleck's smile could not be less happy. He's like, like it is hilarious. Aren't they? 
are, they're in like a McDonald's like drive through right? Like look at this Obviously photo. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> so, yeah, okay? this is a Dunkin' Donuts drive through And someone's like, oh wait, before I give you your order, can I just, you guys are celebrities, can I like snap a photo? Because they're in their car and they're both looking and they're like, oh, and he's we're like, trying oh, to get on we have way. to do this, yeah. <laughs> I hope that employee is rich as fuck right now for selling that photo to People Magazine. But I don't know. I mean, she went, um, she's solo going on this um thing for this show called Atlas. Yes. Her, like, and her tour. co-stars were like, someone asked about her marital status and the co-star was like, don't ask that. Like, she's an EP of this show and she's absolutely fabulous and she's the one that, you know, uh, encouraged the, the two other male parts um, to be, you know, diverse and it's a diverse cast and da da da, da. And um, so there's just so much speculation. But then also they were saying that um, I agree with that. Jennifer Garner, like- the insiders that Jennifer Garner is like hoping that they'll stay married, which I totally believe. She doesn't want him. Oh, she's hoping they'll stay yeah, married. Yeah, and I think that Jennifer I mean, Lopez, I think all of us were pulling for I that. Mean, we were like, thinks, oh, Jennifer Lopez is the nightmare. I'm like, one is always smiling and one is not. So <laughs> I, I don't know. And that was the other rumor, but... Look, I do think she's addicted to never slowing down. And he's probably like, I thought we were going to slow down a little. That's yeah. what I think. In, I just, in career wise. They're both they're both so famous. Like, it's hard to 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 just be normal. I don't think you can be normal. And right. you just have and to accept you have that. these this goal, not just of a couple goals, but it's almost more romantic that 20 years later yeah. you come back. And also, I'm like, who sees a boyfriend from 20 years ago and looks better today than they did 20 years right? ago? J-Lo is the only one whose body got better 20 years. <laughs> Literally. Her body's better at like 53 or Every 54. Every year she gets better. Than, yeah. I, I feel like though they were literally like America's parent trap. Like we like all were like, mom and dad got back together after all these years. So yeah, yeah. I hope they don't split up. But I also am like, I don't know. They've split up before a couple times. It wouldn't be that shocking if they're. I know. feel like even if they split up, they would not want to like finalize it. Like it's just too embarrassing. Yeah. I don't or know. Or they did like a year or two ago and we're all just catching on. <laughs> or they aren't legally married. I always, I think that's that there's, there's a lot of stars that secretly don't get legally married like do like, a party do, do the, photos. the marriage yeah. do the whole thing because they want it and they want the world to show the commitment but they also are like hey if it doesn't work out you know this is going to be even easier but yeah. if you have a, a ironclad prenup and you're both rich it should be easy anyway yeah. but um but if you own property together that's worse than being married anyway talk to ariana and <laughs> um tom sandoval okay little update now p diddy is being sued by a model. There's been six new lawsuits Good. of people. Good. I mean, it's done. Everyone, it's all coming out. And then, of course, people are like, oh, it was 20 years ago. Why didn't she say anything then? Well, what also happens when you, when a crime happens to you and it is someone powerful, yeah. you're oftentimes even more afraid to come forward because he already was fucking her up as far as getting more modeling gigs. Mm-hmm. She's like, not only was she traumatized by the event, but then he made sure that nobody else hired her, which is the same thing I used to say about Louis C.K., who would keep female writers from being hired mm. because he's like, I don't want them in a room where they may share the story of me whipping it out and masturbating in front of them. God. Also, why I've brought up this story at least 25 times on this show <laughs> to oh remind God. people you could enjoy Louis C.K., but just remember that. Yeah. And I, I think so often people think in. If someone doesn't come forward then and does a lawsuit or goes to the cops, that it wasn't that bad and they kept to themselves. I'm like, but what happens is whether you talk or whether you don't, they can screw you career wise when you're dealing with Hollywood. They could blackball you and when they have this kind of power and all of a sudden your agent drops you, you don't get any more offers yeah, and, and you're traumatized from from this person, and he ends you. It's so awful. I that video is so it's so. And she says, Cassie so also said, "Thank you so much for all the support." Yeah, and I'm I'm always going to be recovering, um, but it's really important that people are you know sympathetic and empathetic to uh, people of domestic violence because it goes on forever. And there's you know, and if you know somebody, like yeah. try to help them get out, but also like just be there for them. You never know. Like that video is so cringe too that he did. I'm like, what? Like, and I guess because that's one night. That was yeah. one night in ten. So I years. guess she had it for the lawsuit, and then that is how it got released. Uh-huh. 
And then he thought it was safe because he paid 50000 for it not to be released. <laughs> Which is like not that much from him. I'm like, well, yeah, he's like, here, here, shh, be quiet. Like, right. It's so gross. And of course, people always are wondering what's the J-Lo connection there. Yeah. Because she was there for that shooting. And then I've read that people said no. You know, nothing ever happened with her because she did have her own career and like, Mm -hmm. and he wasn't like that with her. Who knows? But this other bodyguard came out and said, oh, did an interview. Oh, I've seen him be like this with a ton of women, like four or five different women. He's seen this happen. And of course, you're like, okay, well, why didn't you do anything about it? Yeah, because bodyguard. people didn't talk about this right, then. and of and course it's the your bodyguard's lively, scared too. He's going to lose his right. job. Your body, the bodyguard is like, what am I going to do? I'm just a bodyguard. Like I don't know how to do anything else. Like yeah. I'm not a doctor that could go like get hired another hospital. Like right, or if I say anything, I'll lose my job. Right, exactly. Um, so so great that this, and I love that every time they do any photo about him. I mean, not that he's attractive, but he's just ugly and then people said that's why i always wore the sunglasses because his eyes because his evil eyes so <laughs> good for that look look how ugly oh, he is here that video no he is the worst um let me see what else um okay let's go back and just finish up with you and tell everybody because you have shows coming up oh my god i have big shows tell yeah. everybody where they can follow you and go to your shows oh thanks um you can follow me anywhere at anna Roisman. <laughs> Just my name, Anna, A-N-N-A-R-O-I-S-M-A-N. And then I am doing Punchline Comedy Philadelphia. I'm co-headlining with my friend Tom Hearn. We're doing a tour called the Fabulous Sweetie Tour. He does Ina Garden. Uh, you would love Tom. Love. He's yeah, I so saw your funny. posters. It looks so good. Um, and so we're doing that June 2nd at Punchline Philadelphia. And then we're doing Gramercy Theater in New York awesome. on June 5th. That's amazing. Yeah, and our friend Zachariah Porter, who's like the funniest person on TikTok, he's opening for us, and so we're so excited. It's going to be great. Uh, those I'm are th- so glad you came. We Thanks always have so much me. fun. I know, you crack me up. I love doing our scenes. And tell them everybody your Insta. Insta at Anna Roisman. So right. find me there. Follow there, TikTok, whichever you prefer. Thank you. Remember HeatherMcDonald.net for my dates.